good afternoon. So I did my research on mental illnesses found in dancers specifically. Um, it relates to my major because I'm a dance major. So all of this was really interesting to me and I hope you find it kind of interesting too. So the first thing we're going to talk about is depression. Um, there are many connections to dancers with this. Um, a lot of them, a lot of us develop depression for many different reasons. One of those reasons is vitamin D deficiency. Um, there was a study done and it has shown that vitamin D is linked to or can be linked to depression. And dancers, a lot of us have um, a vitamin D deficiency, especially in the winter time, because during the winter time we are in the studio from like eight in the morning until 10 o'clock at night with a lunch break somewhere in between. So it's, we're inside all day, every day, and it's very difficult to get sufficient vitamin D when you are doing nothing but moving around inside. Um, another thing is stress. You know, dancers are very stressed out. We have rigorous schedules and it's just crazy. It's a crazy thing to be entering into. Um, but also injury. So when dancers get injured and they cannot dance for some time, many of them develop depression simply because dance is an outlet. Dance is, you have to love it to do it. And when you can't do something that you love, it's, it hurts, it hurts, it hurts your heart, um, and it, a lot of dancers develop depression after injury, um, and in recovery simply because they can't do what they love and what they worked for. A lot of dancers will spend time, months, working on a performance and get injured the week of performance and not be able to perform, and that is absolutely heartbreaking. Um, another mental illness that many dancers have and develop is anxiety, which is a feel of worry or nervousness, um, a severe feel of worry or nervous nervousness. Um, so one of the main links that I found was fantasy experiences causing anxiety. Um, this really interested me because dancers are very creative people. We spend 90% of our time creating things out of thin air and doing odd things with our bodies. So, um, anxiety and, I mean, creativity is very strong in dancers which makes them prone to fantasy experiences. So sometimes they're internal, so it's just something that you fear happening, and it most likely won't, but you fear it happening, and you can envision it happening in your head, and it's kind of terrifying, um, like falling down on stage. Every dancer is so scared of falling down on stage or forgetting choreography or having a costume malfunction that a lot of us have anxiety over that and develop performance anxiety because we can imagine these things in our head and just freak out when um, thinking that it will happen. Um, there's also the external... Um, point to this and that is when you can see it happen to somebody else um, or it has happened to you before so something externally is causing you to have this fantasy experience 
reoccur. Um, so if you see somebody fall down, if you see somebody get injured, if you fall down previously and you're so scared that it's going to happen again, that you're just imagining it happening over and over again, you will develop anxiety over this. And it's, it's kind of hard to get over because we are such creative people that we think of these things very easily we can imagine it very easily and vividly and it's a very difficult situation to be in um another cause of anxiety is age um dance is a very short span of many people's lives um especially performing so there are many ballerinas that begin performing in companies at 16 and retire from dancing when they're 30 or 40 between the 30 and 45 I would say is the typical age limit I know that's a long time but it's not a long time in the grand scheme of things um, now dancers don't retire there's a lot of ways to stay in the dance community but actually dancing and being on stage is not an option forever. Um, so principal dancers, they've spent years becoming the seasoned professionals that they are. And when younger dancers begin entering the company and coming in and the older professionals, they get older and they know that they are replaceable. They are very replaceable. And they see all this young talent and hardworking young people coming in knowing that one day they will be gone and this person that has just entered the company will take their spot. And that's something that people fear and they develop a lot of anxiety over it. Anxiety of losing their job because of their age. And that's actually very scary. Um... Many dancers have fear of injury or re-injury. Um, injuries can put you out for a long time. I put this little picture here to show a dancer dancing while in a cast. Um, um, fear of injury. Sorry, I got sidetracked. Um, many dancers are very scared because we love dancing. We have to do it. The picture... Um, this happens a lot um, with dancers. We continue training even when we're injured, even when we're in casts. And a part of us knows that it's very dangerous, but another part of us, a bigger part of us, knows that if we don't continue to train, we will lose it. And we can lose our jobs over injuries. And not being able to dance is scary. And dancers slip into depression and they get anxiety. Um... A big part of anxiety of the anxiety here is when you come back from an injury, the step that you that injured you in the first place is very difficult for dancers to be able to do that step again. They have a lot of anxiety towards it, and many dancers avoid it completely for a long time. Um, I have personal experience with that specifically. Um, I broke my ankle doing toe hops once, and I did not do toe hops for three years after I was healed completely, simply because I was so scared that I would never be able to do it again, and it's just a really terrifying thing and something that we have to deal with, but also something that we get over. We move past it. We have it. We live with it but we use it, um, which I think makes us a little bit stronger. Um, and the last thing that I will be talking about today will be eating disorders. Um, many dancers develop eating disorders. It's very dangerous and scary, but it's something that some dancers feel is necessary. Um, the two big ones are anorexia, which is a lack or loss of appetite because you have an overwhelming desire to lose weight. Um, and then there's bulimia, which is bouts of extreme overeating followed by forced vomiting. Um, these two are the most prevalent eating disorders in dancers, and 
many dancers keep them keep it to themselves they don't talk about it it's just they do it and when it is found out they can get fired or it's very difficult to deal with um these eating disorders come from the ideal body type of a dancer from a very young age women are told they have to be skinny and have long limbs and long necks and very little body fat which is mostly unattainable the picture that they are looking for is relatively unattainable for 95 percent of the human population um the picture on the screen right over here um is a dancer and this is the ideal body type and as you look at this person there are very few people on this planet that actually look like that so many dancers result to anorexia and bulimia as a way to get that body type just because they have to um body shaming is also a big deal when you spend all your time in a leotard and tights like this lady is people will tell you that you're fat people will tell you to lose weight um there are many dance companies that require you to be under 125 pounds to even audition. Um, part of this is because many times men are lifting you above their head, so you cannot be heavy or else you can injure your partner. However, the body type that people are looking for is mostly unattainable and dancers go to eating disorders to help fix that. Um, that is the main mental illnesses in the dancer's world. Um, I know there's a lot more that I could talk about. It really is something that interests me and is a personal uh, thing because I am a dancer and I've experienced a lot of this um, stuff and mental illnesses are very serious but I'm not sure that there's a way to completely get rid of all of this stuff in the dance world because of what the dance world has to be and is I'm not sure it has to be that way but it is that way and I'm not sure what we can do I just know that these things are very prevalent in dancers and I think it shows that dancers are even stronger than they appear because dealing with all this stuff takes a lot. Um, so, yes, thank you for learning about mental illnesses in the dancer's world with me.